Today on the BV 3D channel, we've got 10 cool 3D prints for Halloween. So stick around and we'll get to them right after this. I'm Brian and you are watching BV 3D. Hello, 3D printing friends, and welcome back. Today, I'm showing off 10 cool 3D printing ideas for Halloween while it's still early enough for you to get started on them. You can find links for all the models that I used in this video down in the description. Every single one of them is free. And when you're checking those out, make sure to look at the other models the designers have made. They've put a lot of time and effort into these, and I think it's super generous of them that they make them available for free. So let's get a look at all 10 of them, starting right now. The first one is Bat Cat and Cat by designer Ezzy Ziggy. They're a pair of cute cats, one with bat wings, one without. Together, they have a bit of a good and evil vibe, and they're really nicely sculpted. The bat wings need a little bit of support, so use tree supports or organic supports for those, and you should be good. These are perfect for parking on a shelf or hanging out with your other tchotchkes, or as my grandmother used to call them, whatnots, because they're what not to touch. Next up, it's the Frankenstein's Book Nook by Tread Engineer. It's a great way to dress up a bookshelf for the spooky season. Print it in whatever color suits your fancy, and maybe paint it afterwards if you like. I would have done it in a marble PLA, but it turns out I need to order some. So, stark white it was. If you print it standing up, it'll need a fair bit of support, and some of the supports can be a bit of a challenge to remove. You might want to consider printing it at a different angle. I think one person uploaded a tipped back version that was supported only on the back. Those supports would probably be easier to remove. It prints in two parts, and then, like Dr. Frankenstein himself, you assemble your monster. Unlike Dr. Frankenstein, this monster has things pretty much all together already, but we may need to give him a hand. If you need a place to keep candy handy, consider printing this pumpkin storage head brick by designer Emmanuel. It's available as a multicolor model you can print using a Bamboo Lab printer with an AMS unit, or a Prusa with an MMU, or any other printer that can handle multiple filament colors and types. It's also available as a single color model, and you can paint in the face with some black acrylic paint. You can also print the face pieces separately in black and glue them on, which is what I did. If you do this, note that the mouth doesn't quite fit in the outline, but it's close enough. This one also needs a fair bit of support when printing due to the somewhat horizontal nature of some of the overhangs. But I think the result is worth it, and it'll keep plenty of candy on hand at your desk or in your living room if you need the occasional snack. This is the Halloween Tea Light Ghost 2 by designer Idea Womp. It's an easy print that doesn't need supports. For the best results, I recommend setting the wall or perimeter count in your slicer to four walls. This will prevent the slicer from using infill. The infill pattern can be unattractive when lit from behind with the tea lights, and avoiding infill on this model only adds a few minutes to the print time. Place it over the top of a cheap dollar store tea light and enjoy. Now, as long as you have cheap dollar store tea lights handy, why not give these chain candle stands a go courtesy of designer Molodos. This is a parametric design, which means you can edit certain parameters or settings and customize it to your liking. Need to accommodate a slightly larger tea light? Edit that setting and generate a new model. Want something taller or shorter? Edit, generate, and done. I downloaded the standard set of three, short, medium, and tall, and printed them out. And then I discovered that my cheap dollar store tea lights were ever so slightly larger than what the model was designed for. So I made an adjustment and printed again. And I'm happy to report that they now work perfectly. I also discovered I could put the tea light ghost on top of it, and it looks like the ghost is chained to my desk. It doesn't have a ghost of a chance of getting away. Now, this one is really, really cool. It's the Gargoyle Door Knocker, designed by Mandic, really. Also, go check out his channel. He's got a lot of cool videos. There's a link in the description. So, this is a really cool model, and there are two versions of it. One is a print-in-place model where the knocker prints as part of the whole model, and it prints all at the same time. 
The other has the knocker as two separate parts and you assemble it after printing. I opted for the separate parts version and I could not be happier with it. I needed to use a little bit of support for the horns and the insides of the ears, but with tree supports, they came off pretty easily. There are some screw holes in the back so you can mount it that way, but since I'm only planning on leaving this up for Halloween and because the part of the door where I wanted to put this is glass, I'm using double-sided foam tape to hold it in place. This is Cat Knife Door Corner by designer Mike Hurst 81. It's not a tabby cat, it's a stabby cat. It's a super simple print and you just prop it up in the corner of a door frame for a quick and easy Halloween decoration. Searching for door topper will return tons of designs available for various occasions or just year-round decoration. I happened to see this one and I liked it. And I printed it. And I put it right there at the top of the door. It's definitely an adorable decoration. This little thing is the Candy Bat Corn by designer Eddie B3D. It can be printed with a multi-material enabled printer or it can be printed as separate pieces which then get glued together. This is the sum assembly required version. The eyes and mouth do have a little dot of white on them, so those were technically still multicolor, but you could use a teeny tiny bit of white paint to do those. After printing, a few drops of super glue held everything in place, and now I have a super cute candy corn with bat wings. So, speaking of, candy corn can be divisive. Some people like it, and some people hate it. For those who cry over the atrocity of candy corn, I made this. A candy corn colored cover for Kleenex cubes. This was inspired by Rad Dad Print Lab's cover for wider tissue boxes. I spent a couple of minutes in Tinkercad putting this together. It prints upside down. I started the print using white filament, and then I did filament swaps to go from white to orange and from orange to yellow. That's all there is to it, and now I have something fun to brighten up this boring blue box. Last, I have this. It's the Franken Chunks Monster Kit, an excellent design by the Kit Kiln. This fun little do-it-yourself kit prints in different colors and you assemble it after printing. It just snaps together, no glue required. The arms and head move so you can pose it to a certain extent. I really like it. Great work by the Kit Kiln. So at the last minute, I decided to show this. It's Matt 3 gs Fake Nails, a nail through the finger prop, kind of like the old arrow through the head gag, only smaller. My main reason for printing something like this, of course, was so I had something funny for the video's uh, thumbnail. <laughs> and that's it for the models. I hope you liked this video. Remember, all these models are free and they're all linked in the description. Thanks to the designers who made these available for free. Thank you for watching and big thanks to everyone who supports the channel. If you liked this episode, give it a thumbs up and maybe subscribe so you don't miss new ones. Well, 3D printing friends, that's about all the time we have for this one. And now that we're at the end, go load up some filament, fire up your printer, and print something cool.